There we go. All righty. Well, here we are. Good afternoon, everybody. Bienvenue tout le monde. Thank you so much for joining us uh, on Zoom. Those of you who are here in the space with, with me, unfortunately, I'm not in four space right now. And those of you who are in four space, thanks so much for making it in there on this rainy day. We're so excited to um, hear about the first outcomes of the Public Arts Garage. So I will be passing it over to your profs in just a second. I just wanted to let you know where you are. So we are streaming live from Concordia University's Four Space, which is located on unceded indigenous lands in Jojage, Montreal. And what we do at Fourth Space is that we connect um, people to what's going on at Concordia. What are Concordians basically working on in terms of research, in terms of various initiatives, what's happening in the classroom, uh, what are the dialogues and development across the university. And we are kind of a public space where we bring folks um, into the conversation through various public kind of engagement activities. And so to that end, we do try to zoom up <laughs> for everything that happens in the face in the space to expand our um, kind of audience and accessibility base. And we also stream our events to YouTube as we are doing now. And I will pop that link in the chat for you to review at a later date, especially those of you who can make it because of time differences. Okay, so that's it for me and your orientation. And now I'll pass it over to Sylvie and Patrick. Welcome in. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much, Anna, and the entire uh, Fourth Space team. Uh, as we were discussing on our way here, uh, we really, really feel extraordinarily supported. Uh, it was great to, uh, to, you know, to have you know, a tech team following us along the way. It, was, it felt very fancy, uh, but also we we have we have documentation for all of these experiences, uh, documentation that we can that we can share, uh, that documentation that you can use as well for for further exploration. Um, during lunch, as we uh, as, as we ate our sandwiches, uh, Doug was uh, editing and uh, rendering video and and uh, you know sticking sound uh, where, where it needs to be. Uh, we think we uh, <laughs> haven't heard it yet. And thank you, Doug. <laughs> um, yeah, she's behind here. Chanel is behind here as well, so she was with us. If you look good, it's because of her. So thank you, and, you, and yourself, of course. Um, so Sylvie, Sylvie um, asked you, proposed that you start thinking about uh, the, the various performances, um, but I, I'd still like to maybe have first impressions before we dive into that, more general impressions. So how is this as an experience? Uh, it's a multi-sensory uh, um, uh, experience. We, we were in public space, we walked into private space, we were surprised at one point that uh, the security at uh, Place des Arts didn't kick us out because you know, we were blocking the entrance and we were there a long time. And yet they 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 were tolerant. They were far away. They were looking at us, but they you know they waited. So that that was interesting. Um, no incidents along the way. No accidents. Uh, we were we were concerned for for your safety, Victoria, as you stood on the uh, on that step stool near 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 that uh, very heavy truck that came very very close. But it, you know we're all good. Um. <laughs> and and one of the things that I'd like to also add is the um, the unexpected activity. I don't know that just sort of seeped into each and every one of your um, each, each one of your um, events. So how how does that resonate with you with the sound of the city? with the amount of activity that took place. And uh, at some point, I would be very interested in, in hearing from you about what, that, what it means to encounter this uncontrollable activity. And I know some of you sort of mentioned it. Um, and how you, just a little reflection on what it does to extend your, your experience of it, both as people who are watching and as well as the people who are presenting. So it's just something I'd like to sort of just touch on a little after because we are dealing with public space. And so to, to make abstraction of public space and just treat this as though we're just catapulting performance into a chosen site doesn't really, um, I think, doesn't really reflect the whole point of contextualizing work. So that's just something. Um, also, I, I, maybe the, the, the fact that uh, half the people were across the world, 
as well. So we we're very keen to hear about uh, your experience watching this from the comfort of your living room, kitchen, training facility, uh, the, the various places you're watching this from. And, and also I know there were technical concerns because, because of the, uh, the distance and the lags and the various robotics and, and time, uh, you know, time reservations. And was that in China with, with the drone, if I remember? Um, so, so we'll be very keen to hear uh, your perspectives as well. This is the, the first time that we've done this uh, kind of hybrid international course. And I want to thank, the first thing I'd like to do is to thank all of our partners who've been just so incredibly helpful and generous with their time. Uh, Taylor Still, Martin, Martin uh, Leibinger. Am I saying it right? Yes, that's, that's perfect, yeah, and, thank you. <laughs> And um, and I, there are a couple of people that I don't know I, if you could just identify yourself on the screen, the person who just went like this. Milena, and you're in, are you in Brazil? Yes, in Brazil right now, Campinas, the city of Campinas in Brazil. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I can't hear you, Patrick. You're, are you at the circus school? Is that what I'm seeing? In the yes, back? yes. Okay, and, <laughs> and the other person who is with us, who's got dark headphones on and looking down, and that is, oh, she looked up, Taika. Hi, and where are you? So, yeah, I'm in Belfast, Northern Ireland. And um, yeah, and um, just want to say also thank you to all of you. Uh, can I uh, answer already to something or start to start the discussion? Yeah. So what I found really fascinating, and I really want to say what was brilliant about so many of these projects is uh, just how they were like, you know, it was about the chosen side, but at the same time, you could just see and feel the, all these other sides in different locations in the world. And I just found this kind of the multicultural um, element. It just reflected also the whole situation and also, it, you know, the uh, technological element of it all and just brilliant so well done everyone thank you and and was it um yeah we're curious did, did you feel very far from the action far from what was happening or did it feel just as interesting just as compelling to be able to follow it in that mode i think it is interesting in probably a different way mm -hmm. So our perspective would be very different on what we see is uh, what you kind of show us. And I kind of think that gives a totally different experience in a way, but it doesn't make it less valuable. Right. So yeah. good. Thank you. And Milena, did, did you want to share anything? Yes, uh, I was just thinking what I, I could share now and here, here in Taika, am, am I saying your name correctly? Okay. <laughs> um, I just uh, thought that this, this connection with the different performances, like being online, watching, watching them is it's different because, well, each, each of the performances has one kind of approach. Uh, one is more scenic, another one is is more, I don't know, technological or <laughs> something like that. And maybe the ones who, who, who didn't have this approach to be um, in person, it, it, it was easier to, to connect, like being online in a far distance. It was easier to connect. But it's not uh, like making a, a hierarchy between them, not at all. But it's just a different approach that they have. I, I want to apologize for the chit chat you kept, you kept hearing, because sometimes we forgot we were live streaming and you probably heard little bits of conversation. I don't think there's anything uh, untowards. Um, any comments from the room before we dive into the individual uh, um, presentations? Oh, well, sorry, we'll just bring the baton over. I'm pretty loud, 
Um, it was really fascinating because I was supposed to be online and that was the joke that I suddenly appeared. But um, I think that one of the things that really struck me, one besides the amazing support you have here at Concordia and how fancy this space is, thank you. I'm, I'm a little weirded out in my on TV. <laughs> Uh, but was how the the rhythm of the city was intruding, as uh, Sylvie said, into everyone's performance and the very diverse ways in which each performance uh, reacted to that. I thought it was extremely funny that uh, we dealt with the ex unexpected art group by trying to control it. Mm -hmm. We put cloth around to protect what was supposed to be an outdoor space. We built things. Right. Trees that fell unexpectedly in front of our house were then bonsai shaped, sprayed, misted, um, and shaped into exactly what we wanted because that is who we are. And at the same time watching uh, Vanessa, Victoria, sorry, stand in public in the rain on a step stool, which was maybe going to get hit by a truck, right? Because, you know, I've come from Weimar. So I'm looking at the traffic, wondering if part of the performance is going to be tragic and if that is planned, if she's going to slip off or a truck is going to, and is that real or not? And so I was literally on um, edge with the jackhammering and the rain, and it was wonderful how you you just accepted that this was happening, and I think that made the performance so beautiful. You said it before you started, and then everybody had their own way of dealing with this in this meditative walk that we did. It was also fascinating to me. It was clear how long the people developing it had spent in that space, because the construction on the playground site, which was very intrusive, became a part and counterpoint to the the beautiful slow story inside. So sorry for taking so long, but I was just so impressed with everybody's um, attention to detail, artistry, and craftspersonship. Yeah, thank you. That's great. And yes, you are being broadcast. Ah. <laughs> it, took, a, it took us a while to get camera two going, but uh, we're, we're up and running. Yeah. There's, a, there's a word that I came across, a catastrophize. Um, you know, when, when we kind of just anticipate all sorts of things going wrong. Um, so I think that there's something there about the, how can we just find a, a, our way around that. Um, before we, I know that each one of you has taken the time, and thank you for uh, opening up that spot for us. Each one of you has thought about each performance. I think it's really important that, um, that each work each work is given some attention from each person. Um, and some of you may have missed a performance, so that'll be interesting into how you just deal with the not, the absence, since that was also something that we, we uh, approached. Um, and the reason why we asked you to think about something before we verbalized it is just so that we could work in a kind of a, a very focused, um, crystallizing start and from the crystallizing that we could just capture something and for example if somebody has says something that uh, resonates that is similar to what you've just said it's fine we just go mm -hmm. um, and but if there's something that's really very different then we can kind of just complement it so just to keep the conversation flowing um, if we could kind of just capture these crystallized impressions uh, and we'll just do it kind of randomly like that and then after we can develop a little more but if we could just set those in motion set them into the space um, is that good yeah, that sounds good and, and if you want we can also present a one minute clip just to remind you of, of, uh, of the performance this is what Doug was working on we don't have the last one because the <laughs> we, we got lost. Uh, but if you have some visuals, um, you know, I think we'll, we'll feed it into the machine and make things happen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. We can do a 30 second version of it. Yeah. Absolutely. That's an excellent suggestion. Thank you. 
Yeah. Oh. Is it on? Okay, right. Okay. Okay, right. Yeah. So so the suggestion just the, the, um, we lost track of technology. So uh, unless you're not, unless you're talking into a microphone, we can't hear it on Zoom and it's not being recorded. So what was just said is that the suggestion is that the the, uh, the last and eighth uh, um, uh, presentation uh, be reprised in in a 30, uh, 30 minute 30 second uh, version. Okay, so Doug, are, are you um, are you able to feed that first um, uh, that first video so we can relive the uh, the experience for one minute? You heard me, Doug. Just one moment. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Sorry. In, in the meantime, um, were, were the fortune cookies um, uh, inspiring? So uh, I, I have eight I have eight fortune cookies here, and so um, so after we give feedback on one presentation, a member of the team will crack open a fortune cookie and read it. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. We'll mine, just... mine was something sparkly is in your future. I'm waiting uh, for it. I'm waiting for it. Sparkles. Afterwards, you have to say in your next performance. Uh -huh. All right. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. So okay. Let's yeah. Let, let's <laughs> let's relive one moment of uh, the the first performance. I think it was Diego. I just figured out for the next one. Uh, okay. <laughs> like the sea! Woo! Like a tornado! Excellent. Thank you. That was just what we needed. Um, and you can, you can see the work because you can see the laser as well. Um, okay, so impressions, observations, thoughts that came through your mind as you, uh, as you experienced this performance. Yes, Mark? Yeah. Yeah, I'll bring it over. Um, one of the gestures you did that I really liked was actually at the end after you bowed, where you were taking the suitcase and like rubbing it over the chalk things after you read them. And I was wondering, we're supposed to phrase as a question, right? <laughs> uh, I really like that as part of the piece. Did you intend to like demarcate that as being after the end or did that just kind of happen? Because you bowed, everybody clapped. And then when you were doing that gesture, people were talking to each other and maybe that part of it got missed, but there's my sort of roundabout question, <laughs> reflection. And you don't have to answer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. They, they can be rhetorical. Excellent. Um, it's almost stating the obvious, but I still need to point it out in the beauty and the wonder and in the serendipity of working in public space, just having the accompaniment of the fountains, <laughs> you know, this this other performer. And we talked about how over lunch, you know, really we're performing in space, but we're performing with space and the space is performing too. And that was such a salient instant of the space performing to with you yeah. absolutely uh nice choreo choreography uh, with, with the with the water okay really well, same time i jump in uh also i uh it really marked me the exact time of the day like this early time when the plaza was empty and it was raining i was like you don't expect anybody else in a place that usually is very crowded, you know, and being like this group of like lunatics in that moment watching that performance was really, a trans which for me, it was really transforming the space into something else. I don't know if I will ever be in that plaza at that time with that weather, <laughs> but being there 
involved in a performance with such an energy for their the the light the moment of the day i think it was what struck me i think it was something very sensitive i just like the moment of the day the early in the morning thing watching something so like powerful aside from the, the performance but yeah i think that was really nice thank you i love the physicality of the performance and it reminded me like of well, you mentioned animals, but like how you touched the ground and didn't, weren't scared to sort of um, be in that, those hard surfaces and get down and interact with them. And it, it, it I don't know, I was, I was feeling it as you were doing it and like, oh yeah, 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 you can, you can do whatever you want, you know, in this space. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I wanted to, I wondered if you could tell us a little bit more how you settled on this idea of a dreamscape and how that the site sort of inspired that in you and this, I loved your character as this sort of leader or a dream guide for us as a, as a great way to start. Well, uh, I was really impressed and I have to say I got so inspired that actually I decided spontaneously to change the beginning of my performance so <laughs> i think that's the biggest compliment i can give you and, uh, i'm a little bit late but when i arrived i saw the the, the group drawing on on the on the floor with this with the chalk and i saw the this presence that I didn't know who was, then I discovered that it was Diego. And I was saying like, oh, it's so amazing to see how, how he's like a character around, but what they are doing, what, what you are, were actually doing on the floor, leave other kind of relationship in between the space and the, the, the performance itself. So I really appreciate those, those approaches to, to the materiality that, that we find on the, on the streets. And also, uh, then we pass by when we were coming here and see how these traces were erased by the rain. So there, there's a lot of like metaphors in there too, like the dreams. So, well, sorry for being late, but I follow your work. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, I'm, maybe we can add one question yeah. online as well. Go ahead, Taika. Do we have somebody online who'd like yeah. to say something? Okay. Yes, so basically uh, the sound wasn't the best, unfortunately. So I missed the kind of story part of the performance, but because the performance was so, was so strong and with the, the elements around, you know, with the water on the ground and the fountains in the background and with the facial expression on hands, that it, it works also without it. So that was pr uh, brilliant. And I was just wondering if, um, like, if uh, you actually did uh, your own dream drawings before uh, as a group, and if they directed some of your performance, mm -hmm. and I also <laughs> took part in the drawing my dream. <laughs> so it was a nice idea to get people involved also on this side. So question, uh, I guess that, that you could answer, uh, Diego. So what, what was the involvement of, of the others in your group, if, if I heard well? And did they direct part of it? And what, what was the exchange happening? Was, was that the question? We, we couldn't see you, so I couldn't hear. I could not hear very well. Oh, oh OK, I, I will answer the three questions. That yeah. the first, first one from Mark. Uh, yeah, th th uh, this last action was uh, planned. It was uh, uh, an idea of, of Milena that we, that I can take the the dreams, uh, the the signs, the the letters, the the phrases that the people left on, on the ground with the with the suitcase. Um, yeah, that's that's the really end of the of of the performance. And uh, about the the, the 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 idea of play with the dream that was the original idea of, of the group to play to, to transform the public space like this square 
where people go with their own uh, aims and objective to go to work, to study or other things in a space of dream that is something that we did <laughs> almost every night and to play with it and to share the dreams uh, of the performer with the people that cross uh, in, uh, in, in, in this space. Uh, at, at, at the beginning, we, we have the idea of use this uh, QR code to, to ask the people to send us their dreams by messages, but then we decide to make it more uh, performative, more theatrical, and this, this is what uh, we got. Um, the last thing, well, you, well, yes, uh, I rehearse uh, in my home um, uh, by Zoom. Uh, mm -hmm. I was connected okay. <laughs> uh, with Milena and, and she gave me some uh, suggestions, ideas. Yeah, it was a special way to, to rehearse yeah. by Zoom, but it works. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really like to be uh, there. No, uh, I was a little nervous, but when I started, I feel very, very well. And of course, you collaborate with this atmosphere of, of dream. And it was very special for me. And I appreciate that you were there. Thank you. And as Jose said, uh, that place is now marked by by this dream moment, uh, you know, marked physically, but also we will remember this space. As we walk by, we'll remember our dreams and, and what you presented. Thank you so much. And the official uh, oh, <laughs> fortune <thank> cookie. <laughs> <laughs> so could you open it and, and read yes. us your, okay. your fortune? We had these made especially for this. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Big budget. Big budget. <laughs> <laughs> in my next performance. <laughs> yeah, in my next performance. <laughs> a smile. It's your best asset. Ah, oh, there you go. And thankfully, you took off so your mask to say that. C'est votre meilleur atout. En effet. Merci, Diego. Thank you very much. And so, uh, I don't know, is Doug there? Wait. We'll run the second uh, the second performance. And while that is being uh, queued, uh, I'd like to bring your attention to one of the squares. It says a mix at CU for space. Well, that's actually a camera like out onto the street, out onto the public space, live um, as we're in the space. So you, you have multiple viewpoints on us, on the audience, and uh, what we see if we look up as, as well, so you know. Okay, so let's run the, uh, the one minute of the second performance from the album. Thank you, Thank you. 
the conscious assignment plan sent? Multiple, uh, multiple performance areas, the stages that, that were created. Um, feedback. We're curious to hear, yeah, questions, observations. It can be just a few words, okay? It can be images that you would like to share. Yes, Anna. Is this work? Okay, it's working? Yeah. Okay. Well, there's the obvious, just the different uh, sense elements, the, the hot tea and the crouching down to look below rather than above in the stage. Um, the plants, the colors, the surprise of, it's not sense, but the surprise of Margarita's presence being part of the performance. Um, and I also found like, as we know, Montreal is there's, it's so charged questions around language and had it been in Chinese or English or French or um, an indigenous language, it would have been so specific, but to have German <laughs> um, uh, was I think removed in a really interesting way um and allowed us to relate with it in a different way so i, I really enjoyed that choice also thank you anyone else uh, near there just, yeah. just off what you said I, it's like this cultural remix i felt like i was in some sort of uh yeah i don't know what you, you, you that's all i want to say <laughs> yeah so cultural remix absolutely yeah i'll bring the mic over here I'm really actually interested. Uh, what was the thought process behind the division between the top and the bottom? It was like, was it technical thing? Was it like developed because of like um, uh, like constraints of the space, or is it like there's like some you all seeked out the space that had actually division between like the top part where like you have this like kind of um, fr shop front and the back back front or the top and bottom. So I was like really interested in that. Right, it's a, it's a fascinating uh, series of choices. Um, I, I guess, yeah, we'll, we'll come back, but uh, do, do keep that in mind. We're very curious to know like, the, the logic behind it. And, and also maybe if I could add the, the fact that, um, um, you know, there's a layering going on, um, which is provocative, right? <laughs> and I'm sure this is part of it and we'll, we'll get to that, but there is a provocation in the representation, representational strategies, uh, where where uh, you know where people are positioned, upper, lower, and and also um, uh, just sheer uh, um, performance choices. So we'll, we'll come to that in a moment. Yeah. A anything online? Milena, Taylor, Taika, Martin. Yes. We can't hear you. I think you're on mute. Oh, I know. I just I had to find the mute button between all the. the I don't uh, the, Always when you kind of present the, the, the video, then the whole screen looks different. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. No, I, I just wanted to add that, it, and I experienced that in a lot of the works that I realized kind of how there's an additional uh, quality of uh, like viewing a work from the distance completely different than it would be like on site and, and then Taika also mentioned that before and in every work in in a way kind of for me had this additional uh, quality and um, especially since like so much, much like mixes of technology and presence were, were used and especially with this one it was absolutely intriguing that uh, we were expecting um, that, that Margarita would be in Weimar, right? And or in Berlin. And, and then there's like this mix of projection and her being live. And I just remember that I was in the private chat with Alex and I was like, how did they make it? I could swear that she is live, but it is definitely a projection. <laughs> and then she went in, in the final end of the presentation, she came out of the image and was like, wow. And this uh, was like, the, this. Tr I think for us, like, I don't know how it was on site, but for us, like watching that, it was like the most overwhelming thing that, that happened in that <laughs> performance. Seeing your response was actually a, a big part of it. And, and in fact, she, she's not here, right? She's a hologram. <laughs> just just to further actually the, uh, she's the a cardboard cutout, but we just got, we animated it with um with some code. It's very high texture. Yeah. Yes. Um, one of the things that um, I would also like to just point out is um, persona, the whole notion of persona. Um, 
what what is carried in the transformation of who you're supposed to be, who you're representing, um, who, through whose body and uh, identity you're speaking. That's just something also that, uh, and I think it maybe connects with uh, the notion of spatial configuration, hierarchy, what is foreground, what is background, what is above and what is below. Yeah. I'm sensing Andrea has something to add to that. No, no I was going to say similar to that, actually, like it's interesting. Uh, but I, I, I'm not sure even what to say because I want to be very careful with it. The choice of words, yes. Um, yeah, I wondered about that too, the persona and the, the body that's acting, that specific persona. Right, because we, we've just experienced a number of uh, situations in Montreal specifically where, yes. where this was front and center. And, and there are debates, the uh, you know, our, our arguments yeah. for uh, more of an Aristotelian theater where everything is possible and you are acting or performing and more platonic, uh, platonician uh, approach to theater, uh, where, where, you know, no, you represent who you are and that's it. But Plato was against theater anyway, so, so that's, a, that's another issue. Uh, but let's, let's not go to the Greeks. Uh, yes, uh, my friend. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, uh, yes, I really, I think I was already sort of mentioning it, but the levels, the, oh yeah, the levels <laughs> Uh, playing with the sort of staging that was there in this structure, uh, really thought that was cool. And I wanted to ask, and I understand if maybe you don't want to share, but if you could share some of the words being spoken in German in like a, a little translation, but I also understand if it was part of it to just hear those words and perceive from there. Yeah, it was actually uh, quite long. I forgot half of it in German due to um, being freaked out by being actually there. But basically, it was three parts. It was meant to take up two minutes. So the first was, what are you looking at? Why are you here? What are you doing here? What do you want from me? And then the second part was, haven't I given enough? I have nothing left to give. Um, the earth is destroyed. You used to find me so exotic and wonderful. You thought I was sweet and tasty. You used to like to taste me, but now you don't want to even pay for me. Nobody sees me. Uh, I don't exist. Oh, fuck off. Go back to your condos and buy shiny new glittery things. I hate you. I hate your racist colonial love. Um, wait, no, don't go. I planted some lettuce. Maybe you can stay with the trouble. Stay, let's plant. Maybe something will grow here in the cracks and in the rubble. Well, th thanks for the translation. The, the essence of what you just said, I think, for me, was clear, even though I didn't necessarily understand. But the entire physicality, tonality, projection made that clear. So that this is uh, very interesting, I find. Um, so, Barry, will you um, have the honor of uh, opening the uh, now traditional <laughs> Chinese good luck cookie, <laughs> fortune cookie? We'll wing it. You'll wing it, yeah. And, and, and as, as you do that, is there anything you'd like to uh, um, collectively just uh, bounce back on some of the questions? Yeah, a couple of things. Um, this began with Mark saying, why don't we go out for and get some dumplings one day? <laughs> and so we ended up wandering through Chinatown. We found a space that was intriguing, and the owner of the building happened to be outside, and he loved the idea. And I think one of the interesting things is that as far as I can tell, this was the only performance where we actually had to get permission from someone who had the public space that we could do it so that they could turn on the electricity for the projector, so they could make sure that they weren't filled with cars. And even the person who had the truck who was loading it said if, if he had to move it, they would move it. So there was a whole bunch of congruencies that worked that enabled us to do it. If the person had said, listen, you know, we just sold the building, we don't even own it, which was true. Uh, so I can't let you do it. 
but he didn't. He was intrigued, and he came out and he took pictures of it as we did a rehearsal yesterday and gave us the fortune cookies and said he couldn't explain this to his father, who, who I had actually interviewed many years ago, about what the heck we were doing. And, but he, he thought it was a wonderful idea. So you had the collaboration of someone who created the space so that we could use. And I think that was a key thing. The other thing is that we had a lot of discussion about where the audience would be. Would they come in on the side? Would they actually join in into onto the mat? Um, and we decided pretty much at the last moment that the best thing was to create sort of an amphitheater. And the audience, where the audience would be was a crucial part of the statement we were trying to make. So okay, that being said, thank you. so I'm supposed to say what, in my next performance? Yeah, oh, Milena would like to intervene as well, yes? I may even suggest uh, that if you want to share some of the footage with the owner. Yeah. Oh, oh we're, we'll send it to Gilbert. Gilbert mm -hmm. Lee, by the way, all of the sons were named with a G sound because the father, whose name was Arthur, uh, wanted his sons to be named for Canada. So you have Garnet, you have Gilbert, and there's another one in there too. Right. So that also is a much longer story of the transformation, and now this family is going to have to leave their building. The mother, the grandmother, actually used to live upstairs, and now they're looking for another building at some point huh. where they'll be able to continue, but it won't be in Chinatown. Okay. And so dumplings next week at this restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Milena, you want to say something? Okay. Yes, I, I want to say something. It was very nice to to hear the translation of what you were saying uh, during the performance because uh, while it was happening, I couldn't understand very well what was being said. What was being said, and but but what I could see was definitely to totally me uh, matches. So uh, I I'm, I want to say that the visuality that you created. As um, already says everything. I, I don't. I don't. I don't mean that. Okay, you you should not say anything. Definitely not. But I, it complements and it already makes a, a, the the meaning of the of what you were trying to what what you what you made for okay. real. So Thank for you. my next performance, you will be awarded some great honor. <laughs> so you'll be awarded some How much? about an A? Some great honor. <laughs> you'll be awarded some great honor. Uh, some great honor. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Cool. Well. Wow. Right. Did, yeah. Did, did, do you want to approach that? Do you want to? Briefly. Should we? <laughs> Can we briefly? Okay. Um, about representation, that was absolutely, completely, deliberately provocative. Yeah. Uh, what? any of us in this group could be read as and whether or not we had uniforms on uh, that projected power and privilege or not i was sure that for the rest of the walk i might be having trouble that's actually why i switched back to my normal bauhaus self afterwards <laughs> that i would have trouble getting into public spaces covered in in dust as a as a brown-skinned person uh, and barefoot with dirty socks i i knew i would actually um, and this was all deliberate choice and the staging and who was up and down and many of these were made by my co-collaborator who I will turn over to talk about space. So yes, but for the record, I do have some Chinese ancestry. That's the fun of being who I am, uh, especially in Canada. I can be read as almost anything and I play with that on purpose. Um, I'll just be quick, but one thing I wanted to say about, or just reflect on as someone who was involved in putting this on, is that what was really exciting from the start was how the space meant something different to each of us. Um, as a historian, I study queer histories, so for me, this like kind of non-space is a potential kind of cruising zone. Um, a tea room is an old vernacular for a cruising spot, like a gay, um, I think toilets were called tea rooms, uh, if you were cruising there. Uh, Barry wrote a previous history about this part of the city, so for him it was very much, you know, a reminder and a callback to that. Uh, just a quick reflection of how exciting it was that everything means something different, even to the three of us who were there. And I got to wear a dress, so. Oh yeah, and there was a person who, I guess he's not homeless, he built a home in that alleyway. You could maybe see it if you looked to the right, 
past the stage is a very thin kind of strip of plastic and that's the door to his home. And while we were there, a woman came and knocked on the door and visited her friend. And when we were there, he guarded our vegetables. We saw him last night at two in the morning when we brought the trees by and he was there. And uh, we asked him if he had a key for the lock at one point and he came out instead with a really big bolt cutter. Um, <laughs> so he, he, all space is public to this guy, I guess. So we dedicate the piece to Gerard. Gerard yeah. Right, all space is public to this guy. I like that. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm very keenly excited about reading your final papers. Um, there's so much there so far, and, but we're only two eighths into uh, into our uh, foray. So let's let's dive into the third one, uh, Doug. When you're ready, <clears throat> if you could cue the third one, please. This was the colonnade at the uh, map. When we leave here, where will that lead to take us? Will we remain in the place of this feeling? Or does the cityscape shift us to yet another world? We slowly drift back towards the sounds of the city. Where is Mount Royal from here? Where is Park and our Elm? Where are the cave hills? Where are we beyond the columns, the gates, and fences? Drifting here from elsewhere, over the barbed wire and scaffolding, Finding our place in memories unfolding, the dimension is altered. One more step and we leave this world for another, leave the calm respite. For our next encounter, I feel the spinning of the earth floating in immaterial space. We are but drifting through realities to pollinate our conduit. This passage is sanctuary, a found ritual, movement, an unexpected encounter. Will this time travel through here remain with you and I? In our memory, in our memory, can our memory follow us back to this illusion? What words or feelings will bring you back here? In closing, think about a word describing how this state. Is the mic on? Comments, suggestions, questions, uh, as you think back on the colonnade piece uh, outside the uh, Musée d'Art uh, Contemporain. So we had Karina, and can you also name the other members of your team? Margaret, Karina, Taika, who's, who's online, yeah. Perfect, thank you. I think, Anna, you wanted to intervene. Hello? Yeah, okay, just super briefly, um, I uh, was surprised and interested when uh, you brought up Belfast when you were comparing, I think it was the length of Jean Mass. Um, it sort of uh, reminded me of the fact of our context and the other, the other people were studying with and um, uh, it sort of, yeah, re reframed the, the street in an interesting way for me. So mentioning Belfast reminded you that, oh yes, we're not alone here in Montreal. Yeah, and that it was a very specific, like yeah. I, the, to know something very specific about the length of, um, like a geographic specific fact was, mm. was really interesting. Yeah. And did, 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 you, did you think about, uh, because Belfast and Montreal have the characteristic of having a historic, being historically split between not Anglophone and Francophone, well here, yes, but, but also uh, Catholic and Protestant. Like the split here is traditionally the main street, the Boulevard Saint Laurent, uh, and we were very close to it. But was that on your mind at all, or, or not? Yeah, that was very much on our mind. But I was this. I guess uh, I don't know. For me, there was a challenge of um, saying things without saying them. <laughs> 
And I found that was really uh, a challenge. Um, and how, how so? Um, because there was, I think all of all three of us were really um, just impressed by the visual of the colonnade and the space itself, and it evoked lots of things. And without having to impose any ideas on it, even though many many came up, and we could have gone in many directions with it. Um, yeah, I don't know. You want to say something about that or Taika? Yeah, I think it was kind of um, trying to find the balance of uh, between of us saying what what we encountered there and what it was for us, and letting every everyone find themselves and see it themselves and experience the space. So it's kind of um, yeah, you didn't want to make it only a performance. You wanted the people to experience it and be in the process of interaction with the space as well if you know what i mean and i hope it somehow came uh up also in there so yeah. maybe we could just jump off that a couple of impressions from people in the audience people who viewed or or a question or something like that Anyone? Yep. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. Uh, so I was actually uh, interested in like the, the opening for your staff had like the whale thing, like the you mentioned whales, and like I was thinking about the the shape of the colonnade itself was kind of like the whale ribs. So I was thinking if this is like kind of the connections you had or not. Um, the text changed many times for my, for the opening. I I like the night before I changed it, um, based on a conversation Margaret and I had sitting on this just after we'd rehearsed with Taika. I don't know. We started to talk about whales for some reason, and I was just like, oh, and I don't know. I just I don't know. I just kept changing the text as as the conversations went, as our conversations kept changing. So. For me, that was part of the part of the process and our text in general. And coincidentally, we had two baby whales in the harbor of Montreal these last few days, and they just found one floating dead. So there is also this kind of sometimes as artists, we think that we're just speaking about things randomly. But very often we're kind of beacons for things that we are picking up a lot of different signals from different places and we think they're just random and they find themselves in, in our work, but actually I think there's a, uh, I, I, you know i've seen it for decades of seeing artists who start making a work and then the real thing happens. Um, so I just thought I would just uh, connect that with the fact that there were two. Uh, two baby whales that just found their got lost and found themselves in the Montreal Harbor. And so there they are. <laughs> they made you change your text, I think. And the, the whale ribs are also what uh, traditionally would you would find in the in the formal uh, 17th century dresses, right? The, the ballet, and the, we call them in French. So there's something interesting to. You've muted, I think. Oh, it seems we've lost the main view. Hold on. Yeah, sorry, we're just having a computer problem and our audio will be back in one minute.
history is like that, you know, it's like this heavy piece of stone uh, and we are we're back. Sorry, trying everyone. to touch this uh, gray, uh, heavy thing and we are surrounded by it and, and I was just moving into this, this idea of history as a big piece of stone we, we, where we can rebuild things or maybe just leave it there or, you know, this kind of archaeology of, of life at the same time. But well, here is the city. So yeah, I, I was like impressed by that fact. Thank you. Thank you for your work. And it is archaeological. It's not the museum anymore. I saw it being built and I thought it, was, it would last forever and it's monumental. And yet it's an empty shell. So this really gets us thinking about space, built space, right? Yeah. Um, did you still want to intervene or? Uh, I yeah. to on the rain. On the rain, yeah. yeah. Oh, please take the mic. Hello. Yeah, and especially, I'm not sure why, but especially for that performance, it was striking to me. I had the urge of running to you with the umbrella and just like putting it over you because you just look like you were getting so drenched. And then it was your turn after standing there in the rain. Like throughout the performance, I wondered if it had been a sunny day, how we how differently we would have experienced all of these performances. We wanted to protect them. Yeah, so, it's, maybe that's my yeah, yeah the urge that I personally have, like to please cover them, please give them an umbrella. <laughs> yeah. just like, and no one was electrocuted. <laughs> Good yeah. job. I think that, I think you're bringing up something that's very important here, in terms of uh, sorry, in terms of the elements. Um, how they reveal our primary and I or primal I should I should say our primal um, reactions. Do we do we enjoy? Do we stand and dance in the rain, or do we cover or do we protect? What what and so what kind of reflexes have we gained, and what kinds of reflexes have we lost? What has replaced the experience? the direct experience with and in the elements and i think that's just something that i'm when when we we're talking about we kept looking at the weather report and then uh you know and i've done sort of projects with my students here in the middle of winter and and i you know i say it's it may not be ideal but it's real and montreal is a festival city and I, I think that you probably saw that when we were giving you a tour and we were seeing all these stages going up in the middle of the rain and um so you know are, are we going to stop having these celebrations and rituals because of the elements or are we going to adapt so for me that's a whole other question in terms of our relationship to um just to, just being in the elements and with the elements. Um, and um, I just would like you to sort of just think about reflexes and what is primal and what is acquired and how we and how we function with that. Yeah. So uh, cookie time. Cookie time. So I think Margaret has it and she's going to um, tell us in her next performance. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Can you hear Taika? Did you want to say something there? Yeah. As I'm un, as I'm unwrapping this, uh, I was just gonna say about you know the rain because very originally we wanted it to be sunny because it casts so nice shadows. But my first impression of the place, I didn't know it didn't have a ceiling, so I had this kind of oh it's okay if it's raining because it will cover you, but it doesn't have a ceiling, so actually it rains through and it fits with the kind of the contradictions with the space. So, thank you. Um, I also want to say that, that was our site writings, so that we were sort of inviting you on our process of thinking about the site too. Um, okay, if your desires are not extravagant, they will be granted in your next performance. <laughs> so, a, a call to guerrilla performance. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, so, if, if Doug is uh, standing by, maybe we can. Uh, show the, uh, the the next um presentation because it was less of a performance than the presentation of what is to come um 
uh, I'll, I'll let you roll that and then we can uh, dive right in. Uh, how is space experienced and perceived physically and how do, does the architecture and political structures in our uh, areas uh, change or force us to change our paths? Psychogeography, parkour, graffiti, colonialism and accessibility are areas we discuss in our group. Plus the arts specifically can be exper experienced as excluding and hostile with few spaces to escape the burning sun or masses of people during organized events. What happens here between the events? In societies where modern conditions of production prevail, all of life presents itself as an immense accumulation of spectacles. Everything that was directly lived has moved away into the representation. Society of Spectacle, Guy Debord. Spaces like Plus the Arts and Plus the Festivals were resembling blank. Uh, so thank you. So, so this is an interesting, uh, interesting moment because this could have been performed outside. Initially, you were supposed to perform it outside. And then you, you changed and, and you said, let's go inside. And the space we were in was a public space. We were blocking a pub, uh, an entrance. We were a bit nervous about that. But it was also near, uh, near a, a, a ramp uh, and near an escalator as well and the entrance into the underground city, but also the entrance in, on one side, and on the other side uh, into the metro system. Um, so so I, fo I found it uh, especially interesting, actually, that you were addressing these questions as we were standing there. So let's, let's bring up some of the comments, uh, observations. Uh, I guess you can have some anticipatory questions as well, because I, I haven't played the game, obviously, so I'm feeling it. <laughs> I, I'd like to maybe hear, uh, could we hear from our uh, Zoom partners? Could we just go for your first impressions? Let's start with Taylor. We haven't heard Taylor. Yeah. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, so I tried the game actually in the spaces that we were waiting from when you guys were walking from each place we faced. And I was going back and trying to play it again and again and try and complete it. I don't know if I succeeded, but I, I really liked it. And I thought that it was kind of strange because Martin was saying about the point is that you need to get lost. So I thought I really liked this idea of uncertainty in the game. And then, but then I liked how it was also kind of a bit of a paradox because it was uncertain and we were supposed to be lost, but it was all like in this little compact square space. And I enjoyed it anyway. Thank you. So th this was uh, definitely uh, piquing our curiosity and. And that's right. You had you had additional space as you were walking through the uh, through the stormy streets of Montreal. You were able to to test this out. So this is great. I'm glad you did. Uh, Martin, I'd love to hear from you. Um, for, for me, it was kind of um, uh, yeah hard um, run like because everything was running at the same time. I was sharing my screen. Uh, playing the game, trying to get the words, um, but I definitely got uh, lost in that whole experience. So that 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 part uh, worked, and I, I totally liked also the idea of like creating this like in between space that is completely digital. And I like um, before like before and afterwards, I kind of played around with the game a little bit more, and I discovered like some places in Weimar that I knew and some stuff and. I, I really yeah like this kind of um, with this super simple like um, 80s style um, graphics like this associative uh, journey uh, through also memories that I have from Weimar since I'm living in Hanover now I'm not there I only know it from from memories as well so yeah that was a really interesting kind of uh, digitally um, on multiple layers uh, getting lost yeah. <laughs> In, in the space, yeah? Great, okay. Right, we're getting mask, mask on, mask on. Yeah. Mic, no mic. Um, I, I actually had a question. Um, so you, you were able to, like, where are they? <laughs> to create um, an, a website, a game, all in 10 days. <laughs> I mean, the game industry is kind of famous for something called crunch, which basically you're, you sit by your computer from Thursday to Sunday, 
straight, like and you don't sleep a lot. <laughs> that explains part of it. Websites are pretty fast, but code code is slow, graphics is slow, uh, designing everything because you actually you have I mean you have to push put every pixel in its place. So, so you can, there is no shortcut, so to speak. But except for some plugins, like the one uh, you found where you can take a photo and the photo um, translate it to pixels. And then they crash all the games when I try to make it. Yeah, but the thing is, if you do too much, uh, the thing is when you take a photo and you get this... Um uh, when you do it automatically, like the first thing I had to do, because I experimented with it, I had to spend the day like cleaning up because it's too many tiles and it's so tiles is very square, each square. So you always have to think like, okay, I have a limitation. Maybe it's good to stick with 100, to, below 200 tiles for one, one room or one square. And maybe the, and this generated or this shortcut photo came out like with 20,000. So, so, so it's usually the shortcuts can make it worse, uh, oh. but for a few shots, it, uh, it worked. If you look on our website, you can actually see the entire, um, uh, you can see all the rooms. So there is a map of all the rooms. So then you can also see if you manage to find all of them or not. Uh, yeah, I think it's also, uh, we were, when we first started doing this project, we didn't have like the medium in mind. The medium was uh, Idun made games before, but I never did. And we found uh, uh, Idun knows this uh, very simple game engine called Bitsy, which we all three of us could work on it in the same time. In this way that we all made separate rooms, and then we tried to like kind of weave them together because we all kind of made a little game. And then we tried to connect them together, like Martin from our group, who is sadly not uh, now here. I think he's traveling. He made like the Weimar, uh, some of the Weimar rooms, because he made like the Kinnitsche Cafe. I did like Platz the Arts, uh, kind of. I, it was like after my failed attempts at some other like photo stuff, I, I did like the Platz the Arts, and it was really interesting because I first tried to do like some other coding stuff with it, which was also a failure. So it was like very interesting process in the way that we could collaborate and still kind of um, a lot of, um, and the way we wanted to, to do this game was, uh, or like this experience was to like, uh, the experience to be valid both online and if you are in this space so that the Zoom people don't have to just look at the Zoom. And also as we go forward that like Martin could always be included very, just as like all of us, so yeah. Was the third person Elsa? Was that right? The no, no, person? Martin. Oh, it's Martin. Mar oh, Martin. It's the other Martin. That's right. Yes. Okay. No, not this one. The other yeah. Martin. Yeah. yeah. Mm, thank you. Uh, I'm curious about uh, the chip. Or uh, yeah. Um, does this chip? changes all the information any every time or I mean do you change the information every time or yeah you reload it or do you have all the information or how does it work uh, so uh, this technology is called near field communication so it's um, the bus cards if or metro cards so when you go on the metro the card you're holding in your hand is basically what I have in my body um, I can change the code so there's basically one line of code so what I did uh, last night was to put the link to this game in my hand. So, so, and I can change this as many times as I want. So usually I have another game here uh, and it's a way for me to communicate. So I've done many things uh, with this uh, technology. Um, and one of the reasons also using it here is to also not use, to, uh, not like show, shorten the distance because everything is around us is technology. Everything we wear is technology. Uh, but but we tend to have a fear for something that it's technology is something here, uh, but everything around us that is human made is technology. So it's also a way to show that for some people, this is a way to communicate. Uh, I, I, I have a music instrument where I can basically, uh, I borrow the screams from ice and humans because I cannot scream myself because I'm neurodiverse. Uh, so so um, I had uh, speaking issues when I was smaller. Or younger, uh, so that for me, that's also a way to communicate. So, so I can actually scream or express pain through a borrowed voice from ice, for example, uh, through because I chose to do that through this technology. So it's also about uh, kind of yeah, minimizing the distance between the humans and and uh, and and not use the stuff based on fear, uh, but actually also think about it in an inclusive way. 
uh, which also connects to the game we did because it's it's more inclusive because anyone can play it whenever you want. Um, we're also um, in there's no finish no finish screen on it. Like I think uh, there's an end, but there's no like you pass the game. It's just like yeah, there is no win or stay loose. We, we chose to not have deaths because <laughs> you can we could usually there's very dark deaths in in games I do um, but, but but there are actually two options uh, for the ending but maybe um, we can have an ending if with a fortune cookie so that <laughs> Just, so just, so just, we, uh, just yeah. very briefly yeah. to say that that I I really appreciate this openness to to grow the 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 game. So if if I go home later and and can create my own uh, way to to be there in, in the space. So thank you for that. Uh, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. This is yeah. Th this carries so much to think about uh, for, for us, and obviously you've been thinking about it for a long time. Um, Here's the fortune cookie. You can decide who, who's going to open it. And um, in my next performance, uh, <laughs> do you want to eat it then? Okay. Yeah, we can't uh, hear. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just move on. Uh, if, you, if your desires are not extravagant, they will be granted. <laughs> there you go. That's sim similar to yours, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, perfect. So thank, thank you so much. Um, we're going on to the next one, which was, uh, yes, um, Ali, Ali led us uh, into the stairs. Um, so Doug, if you can show us the video. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, you're it was right. Victoria, it was, yeah. It was Victoria's. Yeah, I was, uh, I was getting lost. It'll turn on this. into theirs. Picture a narrative like a thread. So, um, in and out just to mention the that, uh, precisely for it. can you pause the video yeah. for one second? Because I just want to mention Thank something. Because yeah. I, Thank you. yeah, uh, thanks. So, um, we were three to begin with myself, Elsa, who's based in Paris, currently in Israel for her brother's wedding, um, and Yoon, who's based in Weimar. Um, who wasn't able to participate eventually um, for extraneous reasons. So the stories began with the three of us weaving together, but the final culmination, um, the actual sort of concrete of the collaboration was me and Elsa. I just wanted to mention that because I wanted to honor Yoon's presence there in this, in this process and, uh, and eventually uh, not being able to be part of that. Okay, thanks. So we will run a, a fraction of the performance. People, are these buttons who need stories to gradually attach ourselves to a fabric, a place, an environment? We fabricate our attachment to a place by weaving ourselves to it, word after word.
Thank you, though. We didn't see the moment when the truck almost hit you, but uh, you, can, you, 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 you can know it was true. Um, impressions, observations, questions. Yeah? Andrea, yeah. Um, yeah, I was, I've worked in the needle trade long enough. And <laughs> so I, I was looking at the building, like I walked closer to it. There's very little left of that original building you mentioned in the, is that like, so I'm just wondering like how you were able to identify it. Like, is it from, you had to do some research, what, like what kind of research you had to do to, to identify it as the place of original needle trade or schmata or whatever. We'll accumulate the questions and we'll start with impressions. Make sure you use the microphone a little closer to your mouth. Is this yeah, good? It's, it's a unidirectional. Okay, can I take off funny? the, yeah, okay, like it helps to take off the mask. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this is actually linked to Andrea's question just uh, about the building spaces. I think having you between them, when I walked toward it, I was running a little late um, and I thought it was going to be about the Imperial Theatre. <laughs> and then I found myself, uh, it's so different to one side of the street to the other. Um, so sort of that in-between space was interesting. And then just a comment that sometimes I find performances I don't want to, like I just want to experience that moment and I don't want to know the rest. And sometimes I find the discussion before and after quite interesting. And um, I feel that with this particular performance, I both enjoyed the experience of just being there in that uh, time. And I also <laughs> would love the experience of, I'm really curious about the research that went behind it. And um, while it was beautiful on its own, I think it's another, um, it's kind of another adventure we could, um, discussion we could have or something we could read it to, to learn more about um, you and Elsa's uh, research about it. And there, there might be some technical questions as well. How, how many, you know, how many uh, balls of uh, yarn can you uh, can you bring up over a performance? But that, that's that's a, another conversation. Yes, yeah, I was. Uh, I'd actually had heard the piece last night because I couldn't download, so I simply played it on my speaker and then recorded on my phone. So I was able to. And my family had been in the Shimada business a long time ago, but. I, I was struck, and I'm struck again, by the tension that is created on so many levels. The rain, you standing out there, the, um, uh, the, there's a tension in the storytelling that's going on, the notion of the red uh, thread and how that's incorporated and used and misused and stuff. And, and then you standing there physically with the trucks going by you, which looks much worse here, by the way. Uh, than, than it did uh, uh, here, it's scary. There I had a sense of what the distance was. But throughout there was tension, and I think the tension was increased because of the rain. And, um, you know, it could have gone on, and I must have blinked because I couldn't quite see what you, this green stuff was. It looked like asparagus. And then I realized afterwards it was thread. And when you went and you put it on the door, or you made that thing, there's also the motion of touching the mezuzah on the Jewish side of the, and I don't know if that was intentional, but that resonated with me as well. Taylor, thank you. So Taylor, yes. and then Jose. Yeah, just a very brief comment on that. I think that tension now that is adjusted, it, it resonates me as something high, highly aesthetical. It's, it's very aesthetical. It's really tremendously aesthetical. The whole frame, now that I see it there, there was so many components that were uh, really striking. So I don't know how exactly did you plan to put those, all, all those things together, but exactly, I think the rain was the perfect, uh, the, the perfect way of really wrapping them all. So that was what really struck me that the whole thing was a, a fantastic kind of piece of art called the whole thing completely. It's really, really nice. So great work on the rain. <laughs> so let's hear from you, Taylor. Yeah, uh, Taylor online. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's just for us, it's actually really interesting to now see, to watch this video on Zoom because earlier today we saw it from a completely different perspective. And sometimes the sound was not so great. We could hear bits, but like not everything. And I couldn't actually really see what Victoria was doing earlier. I could see a bit. And now with this video, I could see everything that she was doing. So that was super clear. Um, and I also really like the, the bilingual or the multilingual aspect of this piece, actually, that was really interesting to listen to and quite 
nice to see how the different voices and the different generations were kind of woven together. And one last thing, I was also quite fascinated by the history of this building that you, you're in front of or behind. I wasn't sure which building we were talking about. But then I think um, Andrea was saying about how there's like not much of it left. And then in this video, we could see like a, a kind of truck or a lorry just next to it. And on it, it said like in French demolition. I don't know. It's like almost like that was times that you had that there. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Victoria, would you like to take a moment to uh, address some of the questions that might have come up? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so, and just also to acknowledge with everybody that it's just me, like, unfortunately, Elsa's not able to be here. So there's things I can say about our process together, but I know Elsa would be bringing other dimensions to this discussion now. So I just want to acknowledge that, that blank, that absence, because I can say some of our process, but there's things that I can't say about what, what she would be saying in her experience of this. So um, super quickly, um, and I know I talked about this in our session in our Maker's Lounge, when we were being located in that part of the city, <clears throat> um, there's, there's been a lot of, I've been grateful to have a lot of opportunities to do performance kind of work in that part of the city, but the thing I'd never done is really look at the history that I have in connection with that part of the city, which I do. So that's what this is about. Mm -hmm. And that was the starting point of the conversation with Elsa and with Yoon, how my grandmother was in the needle trade. She worked in a building. Um, I got my mom on the phone and said, okay, please remind me where, do you, do you remember the address? Do you remember anything about it? And she said, well, yeah, it's the building on Dublurry. It was the Lennox building. And I went and started doing the research online and found a, a census um, statistics Canada document that had a whole listing of all the needle trades across the province and across the country. So it listed the one on Blurry, 1485, and 1485 doesn't exist anymore. It's 1435, but the door that I went to would have been 1485 because it jumps from 35 to 91. But that's the building, like it's still there. Just the doorway doesn't let you in. You have to go to that door. So that's just the super brief, you know, very, very, very quick dig. Thanks to my mom. Also, and uh, so then I had the opportunity to talk to my mom. So we hear her voice, Elsa talked to her mother, we hear her voice, she's in Israel, so she's seeing her cousin. So she's talking to her cousin who told her the anecdote about the Polish Jewish thread and Elsa's family is actually Sephardic. So those two Jewish traditions are overlapped, but also very different culturally in a lot of ways. So that's a kind of link between Elsa and I because she comes from a Sephardic family. She's blonde and blue eyed from a Sephardic family. I am well pale, darker, anyway, coming from an Ashkenazi family. So there was an interesting overlap. And just to mention, even though Yoon's story didn't end up in the final edit that Elsa and I worked on, um, Yoon's grandmother sewed silk blankets um, as her trade. She was a seamstress, we also discovered. So that became a big part of the conversation. Um, so there, were, there was another comment or question. I can't remember if I, if I, I think covered I, everything that well, was I think asked. That I, I would just like to sort yeah. of, uh, pull a couple of threads together, maybe just sort of <laughs> put a little knot in between them. And uh, a couple of things that stand out for me are the notion of the oral tradition, uh, the transmission process between generations and stories and across um, different cultures and the fact that you're also dealing with monumental remains. Mm -hmm. And so the contrast between the ephemeral and also the material. Um, and I, I find that it's very interesting how um, through, as I think it was, who was talking about the stones of history? I think it was oh, Ali. Yeah. And how, uh, how you can make stones speak. And, um, and also how uh, you can bring distances much closer together because you're talking about being in Israel and the cousins and everything and how oral tradition has this incredible capacity to reduce distance and time. Yeah. And you even brought in your demolition crew for the uh, demonstration. <laughs> I'm very impressed, congratulations. <laughs> so here's your 1450. In your next performance, 
Meanwhile, we will queue to, uh, so Doug, we're queuing to the, um, I, I can't remember the uh, fifth, fifth one now, I think. It was um, out on St. Catherine. <laughs> what, what does it say? It says, smile, exclamation mark. It's your best asset. <laughs> So we've seen that before. I think they're limited in uh, in wisdom. <laughs> very limited wisdom. <laughs> okay, so th thank you very much. We we've got the next video set up. And we're good for time. We've got half an hour left and three, three presentations. So we're keeping at the 10 minutes per uh, presentation. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Oh, there, there. Maybe Doug just play yeah. a tiny bit of that. <laughs> And uh, great soundtrack, great industrial soundtrack. <laughs> so impressions, comments, observations, questions. I hope I'm not going to sound too ignorant, but the song, can you tell us about the song? <laughs> it's uh, actually it's not a song it's kind of a articulation of words just to go into kind of a med meditative state but it has a, an origin that it, it, it comes from it we, uh, in my group in Colombia in my theater group we used to sing the, this song that comes from from a community in from an indigenous community in Colombia and in the 80s when the group started uh, they went to this community they they learn some words and then they create the songs so it's it's been something that we have transmit transmitted generation to generation into in the group and i use it as a tool of trying to get in a performative state let's say and because it was well i decided to use it because it's the the sound was easy to get into um and i wanted to people join it so that's that was mainly the decision thank you any impressions uh that you would like to share anna, anna. Um, one thing, it's also kind of a comment about all of the performances. I noticed that maybe it's just the context of the Plastic Festival, but very little uh, passerby stopped and watched or noticed. Like, I think there's just so much activity that they, they just kind of become indifferent to it. And I thought that was really fascinating with almost all the performances. But this was the one exception I noticed, like the crossing guard was really uh, <laughs> curious about what was going on. <laughs> And uh, um, anyway, that's just a comment. I also just, I love the whole thing. I love the, the surprise at the end. And uh, I, I, I forgot that you were even in it. And <laughs> um, 
I guess speaking again, performance also like just to have like a full, even such a wearing like something I would expect in a concert hall to have it out front was fantastic. Um, yeah. With, with construction guys who actually were watching very carefully, yeah. they were interested. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep doing. I really love the activism part of it. Uh, and I think that was interesting because I've been in New York during the Occupy and Barcelona and uh, Paris, Poland, Warsaw, like uh, documenting the Occupy movement. And it's the same aesthetics with those papers and London lately with the, uh, what are they called? The environment group, because uh, the aesthetics is very similar. And I was also curious about the melody because I didn't recognize it. So I also f uh, had this question. So thank you for explaining that, and I really and for daring to do that because it was interesting. I was really curious what what would happen with the letters when we moved on to the piano. <laughs> so thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, just to add that we had two more partners. One that is in Belfast. That she's uh, crazy. She, I invite you to go to the PAG map because she upload their her work that is a sound walk on the city of Belfast, on the city center of Belfast. Uh, and at the same time, we had uh, our amazing runes on chi in China projecting on the walls. So we, we tried to, to figure out how to make pop-up intervention, but we had, hadn't had here like the logistics and the tech and those things. And I was saying like, what would be the most effective way to do it, like intervene on the city without a projector? So, oops, sorry. I think that's a great question for continuity that I think that we're all curious um, and we'll try to find some support for that. I think that there is also a couple of questions. One is over here and one then is Martina, okay. but we're going to keep all right. That that inquiry as part of like a continuity of the project. Thank you. Yeah, I was really interested to continue that thought in both the previous thoughts in how you were projecting and occupying that public space with your voice. I loved how you took that indigenous rhythm that somehow we all were moving to as if everybody it was on the tip do we know that song? Should we know that song? Wait, we do know that song by the end. And how you occupied it with this, this aesthetic of protest and then the voice of protest. And it was clear that it was stopping passerby. So I, I wanted to thank you. Martin, did you have something? And I think Taika, we just lost Taika, but... Martin, did you have something that you wanted to say? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there, are, there are two things, um, actually. The, the first thing is also, uh, like Margarita just said, I really noticed that uh, on this banner, banner, you had the text uh, written, uh, who, who took um, the public space? And, and I think like with just with your presence and with your voice and with these props, like with this long line and this self-made drawings, you really just were all elements that where you really strongly like occupied that space with your presence and that was like super strong even through the digital distance we could really or i could really like feel that how you completely take over that space and that was extremely fascinating and the other thing was um, i don't know how much you uh, on site did see uh, the China part of the whole performance. Um, for me, it was like very, very present because I had like the performance in Montreal only running in a small tile and the whole screen was uh, Runes' uh, projection. And this was also really intriguing, I found, because the aesthetics were kind of diametrical different. Like we had like Runes' drone flying with the battery uh, sign and then the maximum altitude is reached. There was a computer voice. And then you see like this um, Guangzhou, like this giant city uh, and then this projection. And then this, this handmade um, like um, paper uh, drawings on the, on, on the like laundry line that you <laughs> walk across the street. And this was a, just such a diametrical uh, opposition. Um, 
and and I think it came together in moments when you could like really see the projection in China, which was I think uh, there was kind of it, probably he, he would have used a stronger projector if he if he had. But in these moments when you could really see the projection, that was like really strong to have this contrast like hitting against each other. Yeah. Great. And Taylor took a screenshot. Thank you, because we did not see uh, the effect. So more post-production uh, <laughs> ahead of us. Uh, Katarzyna will be opening the uh, now proverbial uh, Chinese cookie. We're creating traditions. <laughs> In your next performance. Oh, wow. An empty stomach is not a good political advisor. <laughs> Okay, think about that one. <laughs> well, it's different. You know. Their the wisdom is, is, is uh, a bit wider uh, in span. Um, so, Doug, the, um, th th this is the uh, sound-based one, but I know you have some visuals. So we'll listen and watch, to, uh, watch this a bit. Please relax your shoulders. Ja sam kraljica svoje pašt. Please remember the second time you were in this exact spot. Please look at the person on your right and count slowly to five. Wandering around makes me so nervous. Open your eyes. Let's go further. Do you also live in this sort of environment? In the forest of concrete? Today we enter the process together. We perform a walk that overlaps time, mine and yours. I tell you a story and help you navigate. The samo je jedan moment pokušaj da zatvoriš svoje oči. Jedan, dva, tri, četiri, pet. Please imagine where the person in front of you might have been last. So you, you, you see uh, a lot of us trying to download or upload the Please, the, the, like the your shoulders. As, uh, as an absent funner, uh, like a walker, and, uh, I'm stepping into uh, the Obviously, I, I was having trouble, but others were, were great at this. Yeah, so go ahead. Uh, yes, sorry. Pass this in there. Thank you. Well, I actually did this during lunch because I couldn't download it. But fortunately, I was sitting at the right table and was told what to do. And, and uh, so I just picked up my computer, put in a couple of earplugs, and did whatever it told me to do. And it's, I found it very similar to walking a meditation circle uh, that uh, sometimes churches have in front of them. There's one in NDG. And, and not having to make decisions is really a very interesting perspective because you first of all you trust what the person is going to do you're not going to be a lemming and walk off a cliff and that um, on the other hand because each experience is going to be unique depending upon who you see or what you do it's very personal at the same time and i found myself being much slower even though i was told to go slow to breathe slower, to do it slower, and all of a sudden it becomes a meditative exercise um, regardless of what it is that you're doing. And I, I'm actually looking forward to going to a park and redoing this uh, just for the fun of it. Um, and I found it in some ways similar. I'm trying to think of the other one that was uh, principally audio where I also found it a more of a meditative approach to doing things mm -hmm. and using public space in a way regardless of where you are What's that expression? Wherever you go, there you are. Mm -hmm. And there I was. And there I was. Thank so, you. So the meditation circus, uh, circle, which we uh, have in pretty much every every uh, society, every civilization. Um, I will be doing it over the weekend. So. <laughs> Rest assured. Mark. Uh, just one thing that I really appreciated, like a, just a quick reflection on that, is that every time I go visit home, as I always make sure to walk by my first school. <laughs> and my second school and my third school and at some points i've tried to revisit them and immediately get kicked out because i'm you know a 40 year old man and not an eight year old child anymore but um i just really love that that was so evocative for me so thank you for bringing back the horrors of high school during this very charming one <laughs>
I'd like to Any just, other comments? If I'd just like to sort of just uh, mention something about the AURAL, the oral. We just talked about the oral, the transmission, and this is very much AURAL. And I just have a question, Barry, for example, that you bring up as to how it changes pace. Um, when we look at senses, for example, the visual sense, what does it do to our um, focal uh, attention? And what does it do to our peripheral attention? What does the oral, A-U-R-A-L, do to our sense of time? Um, and, I, you know, and there are different people uh, engaged differently sensorially, but it's just something that I'd be very curious to just uh, throw out as a question, how do you experience time orally? How do you experience time visually? Yeah, Barry. I think that's really important because I think most of the time we experience stuff visually, especially in a city. You're always watching who's in front of me, who's in back of me, where do I have to go? What speed am I walking up? Am I slowing other people up? I mean, some of us were talking about how New York has a much faster pace than Montreal. Um, and I think we find oral stuff in the city intrusive. The sound of a car honking or something like that. Um, I mean, one of the things that we did specifically in our piece was to try to create the sounds of the country with the birds and, and Mark's soundscape with the loons and stuff, even though we were in Chinatown. When you're forced to think orally, this is very unusual for us, I think. Um, and it's, it's discomforting, but not necessarily in a bad sense. And therefore, when stuff is discomforting, we try to move more cautiously and slower and to take that into, into effect. If we only did this with smells, that would be something, or taste. You know, that would be uh, something also different. You taste something and turn right or whatever it is. Um, uh, but I think you're right. Each of these, it. and we take it for granted and we ignore it, and that's the beauty of what you're doing. I think there was, it was composer John Cage who was being interviewed by somebody once in his apartment in Lower East Side, in, um, in downtown um, um, Manhattan, and um, the, the person was saying, uh, maybe we could shut the window because they had delivery trucks and all sorts of things. He said, why? This is my material. <laughs> Maybe one last comment. Yeah. Yeah, I just Margaret? wanted to um, go off of that and just say often, maybe in walking tours, it can be very much of our personal experience in that. But I really enjoyed in this one how you were engaging us with others around us. Like, how is your the person to the left standing stand like them? So it was like, oh no, you're we're caught in this oral experience, but bringing that awareness of that embodied space and I wanted to ask how you chose those prompts I really liked the various voices and did you each just share your own ideas or did was that in discussion like okay. <laughs> sure I'll try to answer uh, quickly um so we had an initial idea of potentially having four different tracks and we would each record a track and then we wanted to, one of the goals was to have you guys be the performers and have the surrounding city be what you were sort of reframing your attention towards. And so we uh, had imagined like people walking to four different tracks essentially and sort of what, what that would sort of the parallel between being in different cities and the fact that at the beginning of the exercise, the four of us had a really different understanding of the exercise um, and the assignment. Um, and then uh, um, I'm trying to go quickly, but uh, basically like uh, I wasn't feeling very inspired with like a message. <laughs> and so I wanted to, as my part, I wanted to record the four of us. Um, uh, so we all used everyone's prompts um, just really fast. And some of them were sort of internal experiences that uh, Naja and Fa um, came up with and some were more uh, prompt based, sort of based on our styles. And then we did a game where we just read randomly on the screen other people's. And then we just decided to keep going with that. So that's how it came. Um, I'm not sure if I have to add anything, but um, yeah, basically, we each wrote uh, sentences and um, things that were 
well, for me, it was imagining myself walking and imagining uh, prompts in my head that would be inspiring, but also connecting to this idea of chaos and time and and absence, that like not being in the same space, the four of us, uh, and trying to guide people and yeah. And this was this was an impromptu space, right? Because you're, you you could do this anywhere. Yes. And you chose to do it there because they, there was space. It was relatively quiet. It was on the way to somewhere else. But it's also a very significant space in terms of performance in Quebec. It's beside the Jésus, which was which was a, a religious space where, where theater basically was developed in a very serious professional manner. And then that space became a lay space, a, a space for the, the emergence of a culture. Uh, so, so, you know, we, we could keep on layering on uh, you know, indefinitely. We also had one person following us in Texas. Oh, really? Okay. Um, and they were, the host was with some of them in uh, Texas, the host was some of them, they were looking at how the people were making spaces, and yeah. so we were kind of like really following Yeah. Great. Well, thank you. And so in your next performance. Oh, wait a minute. We have just a very quick thing from Mark. Uh, I'm a big lover of the walks that Janet Cardiff does. So there's like the one in uh, Central Park, which is amazing. And I love serendipity in those walks. So when you were talking about chaos, um, Marguerite and I were listening together. We were like, you're Billical, is that what you called it? <laughs> yes, connected by an ear cord. <laughs> but the part where they were like, look at the person and imagine where they were coming from, we just happened to turn and see the construction men come in. So it was like the absolute perfect <laughs> thing to imagine. So let's hear what the fortune cookie tells you. You have a deep appreciation of art and music. Of course you do. <laughs> yeah, in the next performance, etc. Yeah. Thank you so much. And so for, for the last, and, and uh, we're almost on time. We have four minutes, but if, if, if you're okay with it, we'll ex extend a tiny little bit uh, into the um, seventh hour uh, of us being together. <laughs> it's a durational performance. Would you like to, to uh, have us go through maybe a very condensed version of, uh, of uh, the performance piece and pedagogical piece? Yeah, like 30 seconds and then and just to remind us of the, that feeling and the, yeah. Yeah. Can we Can we have a, a microphone yeah, for you? I'll, I'll Thank you. Yeah, and I can you take up. the mask if I go because that's the kind of thing that uh, Teacher, um, <laughs> Yeah, this is mainly a lesson, uh, which is part of a course that we are putting together with my team, which is Carolina and Hala, uh, about um, uh, um, restorative uh, strategies in the public space, which is a course that we're starting today, and we're going to um, take, uh, or in, not necessarily instruct, because we're going to experience ourselves and probably put together the structure of a course afterwards. In, in the in the two cities, uh, Weimar and Montreal. So this was uh, um, the first lesson, which is like a focus group in which all of you participating voluntarily, uh, you could decide to do or not, uh, be take or take some time and rest in a place that in this case was uncomfortable, like the the staircase. Um, so we can do it now if you can just take a minute. I just close your eyes and try to rest. It's just, it's a very sens sensitive sensorial situation. So close your eyes and I'll take your time. Just try to rest after this long day.
Take a deep breath and open your eyes. Thank you. Uh, after this, this short practice, I ask you for some feedback that I already got from all of you. So that's mainly the, the piece. Thank you. Did you guys do it overseas? It did. Yeah. Good. So do you want to share what it feels like to rest overseas for a minute? I guess that watching the performance and making the performance here, it, it's totally different <laughs> because, okay, right now I'm not in a public space, definitely. <laughs> and here it's very quiet, or at least we can only hear, at least at the moment in, uh, in the morning, I could only hear like little birds and things like that. So I was not in a public space that it's totally closed. And so my, my that, that's the way I, I experienced that the situation. You know, it's interesting, Melina, is that when COVID hit and, fl and planes stopped flying and mm -hmm. cars stopped go being on the street, public space, we heard little birds. And we saw animals we hadn't seen. We didn't think uh, we yeah. lived in Montreal. Yeah. Uh, wild, uh, wild turkeys. Uh, <laughs> yeah. In my backyard, it was just absolutely stunning. But one one thing that you mentioned is it's not just the public space. And and, and uh, I was uh, reminded when when you said you know the the un discomfort or uncomfortable about the public space, which was the staircase. And I thought this is too comfortable, so I went on to this like uncomfortable structure. Um, and it's interesting because you can find comfort you can actually eventually find a position that's not too bad. Uh, so do, we, in of do we have that impressions of um, the actual performance itself when we're in the stairs? Maybe Barry, did you have something? Yeah. Actually, I didn't think of it until I heard what you said, but I'm struck by how secure I felt because we were in a group. And that if it had just been myself sitting on the stairs, I wouldn't have been relaxed. I might have been tired and sitting on the stairs, but I've been, been checking and I'm blocking someone. And, and this is something I hadn't thought of before, of what happens when you're part of a group in a public space as opposed to an individual. Thank you. I, th I think this, what you've just said is very significant because I don't know if you noticed that people who wanted to use the stairs would look up and then kind of look for what is the alternative? Yeah. What can I do? Because I can't figure this out. And some people even just didn't even bother going into the building by then, just in case something like what was happening on the stairs was also happening upstairs. <laughs> so a few people kind of like just like went back in the metro. But I, I, I overheard two guys say, oh yeah, Concordia. And one guy said, yeah, it's always like that here. And I'm thinking, no, it's not. <laughs> there were McGill students, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say um, how funny it was that I felt your Canadianness, all of yous, um, in in being uncomfortable in the public space, and I was kind of laughing to myself because I could feel how very comfortable I was in occupying space that was not supposed to be mine. And I wrote that to rest, and I realized I always do this in planes, trains, and automobiles, because I'm always in transit, and I'm never supposed to be there, not ever. So in order to rest ever, I always take the space when I need to, and I always stretch and take off my shoes and lie down. I did this in the Bauhaus Museum the other day, and a couple of German guards blinked and said, oh yeah, sie dürfen das machen. And so it's interesting how you can communicate with your body that you have the right to belong in public space, even if normally you're not supposed to be there. And I think that was a really interesting political part of this for me. I was like, I'm going to lie upside down on these Concordia stairs, and I'm going to take my shoes off, and I'm going to stretch my tired, aching feet from pounding your Canadian, Canadian pavements on your banisters. And it was super interesting that all of you were like, 
we're going to try and leave a space. I apologize to the banister as you did that <laughs> in very Canadian manner. <laughs> um, yep, Barry. Mark. I meant the other Barry. <laughs> the other Barry. Um, I just wanted to say one thing I really appreciated is that throughout the day I was comparing and contrasting, of course, with, I mean, it's only natural to compare with what you did. And it was so powerful just having us sit down and giving us a piece of paper. And, you know, I was like, oh my God, we carried trees and dirt and wore a dress and like, we could have just taken a nap and it would be really <laughs> just as powerful. So thank you for that. What, what will you do with these results? You know, and I, I had a question about the framing of your activity as a course and you as kind of someone who gives permission. So I just don't know if you wanted to address that at some point uh, versus uh, let's just, you know, with no extra layer list, we're just here, a bunch of us, and we're going to do this. And um, the reason to frame it as an academic activity with a authoritative permission. No, no, I think it's, it, it was uh, an organic uh, process, actually, because yeah, was, we were sharing our interests in the group. And uh, I am um, um, a mix of uh, artist and teacher. I, I like to also play with that framework. And the whole project has a lot of the three of us in it. And when we were looking for the final solution to this performance, uh, I mean, in the conversation, it just came out that probably the lesson or the, uh, the prompt or the assignment was a good way to start and to, yeah, to, to work with all the group and to make the whole group part of it and kind of feel comfortable in it and not just something that is, um, yeah, it, it's not a one-sided thing. So it's a, it's a whole thing that could bring us together. And also like a small, this small thing inside the big course, you know, this, this moment that it could give us the time also to really put into a very specific part and go part by part to, to get to a good uh, final end or whatever it, it, it happens. So. Okay. Last but not least. Jose, um, who else was working who developed this with you? Carolina and Hala. Both in at Weimar. Yeah. Now is the time to try something new. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Um, so. Sylvia and I had uh, had the idea that we could uh, end by just running out in the rain together, but we've done that. It's, you know, um, th thank you so much for your, your, your time, your commitment, the ideas that, you, that, that were poured into this, the talent. Uh, I, I truly, truly appreciated it. And I think, I think there's, uh, we, we, we both did. I don't want to speak for you, um, yeah. but, but I assume you did. Yeah, well, um, I assume I did. Um, <laughs> But I, I, yeah, I, I have to say that this has been one of the smoothest, kind of most fluid courses ever. Um, just seeing the, the amount of time, or the not a lot of amount of time that we had to create something and how everything just came together. Um, I don't know, there just seems to be a real flow to this whole activity. I don't know if you feel it. Even you coming over on a really cheap flight, yeah, you know, and, and just screwing with everybody's head. Um, you know, like what's hybrid, what's real? Yeah. Is she here, is she there? Um, so we're going to, and I just want to come back. Uh, Martin and I think Taylor, the whole thing was recorded so our friend Ali here could possibly see what you saw with the screens and everything, correct? In yes. China, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We we also have a request. Um, all of the texts, like for instance, the text that you read at the colonnade, um, any any text, the text that you perform, um, and that you, that you performed as well, um, we we would like to receive them just to archive it and start start thinking about how you how you archive this as well. Um, you, uh, you upload you, you, upload them to the forum, please. Yeah. The forum. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Forum. Yeah. That'll be the spot. There's and also um, an upload uh, folder on Moodle. I just wanted to 
But maybe that's easier because then if you upload it through the forum, everybody has to download it again. And then probably I end up uploading it again on Moodle. So Martin so. will suggest something very efficient to us to do <laughs> uh, from now until uh, very soon. So, so Martin, yeah, just tell us wh where to upload it and, and we'll send it there. Um, and and th thank you. I, I am so grateful for your autonomy. Um, I was a bit, I was freaking out a bit because I thought we're hardly getting any emails. I know, you just say calm down, they're okay. Uh, <laughs> Wow, yeah, this was amazingly self-sufficient. So great, great job, everyone. I'm very impressed, and, and I really, really appreciate this. Uh, our next class is uh, uh, in, is it in Weimar? Or, or, or yeah, June 3rd, right? right there. Yeah, well, so if, <laughs> if you can fly there, you're most welcome, I'm sure. Um, but, but they're also Zooming, so you'll Zoom from a hotel room, so it's not, not the same, right? Um, but but we will be as as uh, as uh, we did for the initial class. We'll be in in the theater department, dance department. Uh, we'll be there physically, so we, we can. Yeah, well, well, not theater, um, just the contemporary dance department. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 no, it's okay. Um, <laughs> I, I used the spaces when I was coming in theater yeah, mode, so that's why I see. So it's another there. life, right? I, I wanted to just thank the fourth space people. I wanted to thank. Thank you. All of our friends. All of you. Over here, everybody who made this, it was so smooth. And I think there's a couple of like messages still, if any of them, um, I think there was somebody who was asking about uh, the game or something like that. Can you just go a little higher up earlier? That might've been, how do you get, how would you think about the game itself as a oh, public yeah. space? Yeah. And I think there was a, something else about um, something about the game, how you get it to do something. So Natalia answered me. <laughs> okay, okay, great. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. All right. Well, thank you. So uh, we won't uh, keep you in the uh, beyond the seven hour mark. Um, I, I have a meeting to attend as well. So take care, everyone. Have a great weekend. Vielen Dank. Tschüss. <laughs> thank you. Muito obrigada. Just, uh, Muito obrigada. Again, thank you for uh, thank joining you. in the space and thank you for joining online. Uh, this has been live streamed to YouTube, so you guys can see it again later if this wasn't enough. Um, <laughs> yeah, thank you guys so much. We're closing up the Zoom and the live stream now. Have a good day. Thank you guys for Yeah. Having yeah, Ale. No sound. Yeah, I'm going to give you another uh, another papers because they were all wet, and we would like to invite you to scan those codes and please fill the form if you feel like it, because um, we're collecting this data just to have an analysis of how we are involving with the public space and those things is not as interesting as the game, and that is something that we can discuss because how how these materialities of the codes are now bringing us to other spaces and whereas we are doing forms there are other ways of approaching to these uh, spaces i don't want to make the difference between one or the other but yeah it's uh, just an invitation for you to visit the map because we were working a lot on that map and also um yeah the form thank you <laughs>